Last time on Ace Attorney Investigations. Who you gonna call when you need a recap? Dick Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth and I tried to investigate the plane. However, Miss Von Karma was convinced that Mr. Edgeworth was the murderer. I tried to object, but... No! Right on the nipple! It didn't go well. The two had a duel of logic where Mr. Edgeworth... kind of fucked up a bit, but he was able to quickly clear his name. But then, suspicion went to a flight attendant named Rhoda Tenero. Is that how the case ends? Is Tenero really the killer? Find out on Ace Attorney Investigations! Next! What? Is this true, Miss Tenero? That key card in my locker at all times. Could you please show us that card right now? Y yes, uh, hold on. Ah! I, I don't believe it! What's wrong? The key card! It's, it's gone! Uh, huh? <laughs> Very clever. Pretending that your card was stolen when in fact you're just trying to hide it from us. You've really thought this through, Fraulein. Wait! It's not like that! You can tell us all about what it's like down at the station. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Edgeworth! What's wrong? There's disbelief written all over your face. Francisca, I know that you are the lead investigator on this case. However... Hold it! Don't even think about wasting any more of my time. <clears throat> you know the rules as well as I do. Evidence speaks louder than words. Even if this isn't a courtroom, this basic tenet still applies. I intend to investigate the cargo hold now. What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I intend to do likewise. Man, this is getting pretty intense, huh? Wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? It's like I'm in an Indiana Jones movie. It's so big! This box is bigger than me in here! Oh man, it's so cool! This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and ultra luxurious first class seating. So, is this a real scene of the murder? There is certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir! For the sake of Mr. Nero, let's make this quick, Gumshoe. Holy suitcases, Batman! I mean, Mr. Edgeworth! It's like an all-you-can-use suitcase fair! These must be all the leftover ones they couldn't sell. The ones the company is planning to dispose of after this flight is over. This paint job is really cool, don't you think, Mr. Edgeworth? It practically screams artsy! Oh? Why not purchase one, then? I'm sure it will bring you much happiness. You think so? Then maybe I will! Let's see, is it $1200?! Uh, I think I'll pass. And Mr. Nero wonders why they don't sell. You'd need two jobs just to buy one. Hmm. It definitely looks like one is missing. What is this brittle substance I'm stepping on? It's a bunch of... glass fragments? Keeping track of this many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on the cargo crew. Ah, this sure brings back memories of when I worked as a part-time mover, sir. By the look in his eyes, he's waiting for me to ask about the rest of the story. But no matter how he pours on the puppy eyes, I have no intention of doing so. What in the world is this? I didn't know that this plane was capable of carrying such large pieces of cargo. This thing's as tall as two of you on top of each other, sir. It would probably take 20 of you to cover the entire surface of this monstrosity. What, really? Am I that fat? Yeah, I guess that sounds about right. There's really no need to take that throwaway estimate seriously, Detective. Hey, what's with the suitcase, pal? 
It's what the victim checked in, sir. So this suitcase belonged to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if we took a closer look. Nah, there's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait. A file? And there's a photo of Miss Von Karma in it, sir. It looks like a profile on Francisca. Why would Mr. Hicks have had a file on her? Ooh! I just love pushing the buttons on elevators and crosswalk signals! Here, you should give it a try, sir! Go on, push it! The elevator is currently stopped on the first floor, Detective. It can't move. Oh, yeah. I guess nothing would happen if you pushed it now. Well, nothing would happen normally anyway without the special key card. That's disappointing. Both the door to the attendance room and the elevator's control panels require a key card, which makes it impossible for a passenger to come down here. Let's see if we can't get a bird's eye vantage on this crime scene. Whee! <laughs> I also love running up and down stairs. All sorts of boxes are piled up here. This one says, Flam Abel, and this one, it says pharmaceuticals. This one says, for exorcism use only. Just what kind of operation is this airline running? Hmm, I may not have a Magatama, but I do have the power of logic! And I believe I can definitively say that this is where the crime took place! I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of his glasses' lenses. Ergo, the victim was here, just as I suspected. So you're saying, and I might be wrong, that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Perhaps it's a bit early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left is to find the murder weapon. Unfortunately, I don't have any more pieces of logic to put together. You arrived at the scene of the crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to direct the investigation. It seems to me that you were already here at this airport for something besides this murder. Yeah, I was. And that reason was? I've been following a very large and involved government-level international crime. But it's much too large for one person to take on alone. So it was decided I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Interpol is involved? It's a top secret operation, so I can't really tell you more than I already have. Of course not, because that would actually be helpful. But what you have given me is enough for me to put together exactly what's going on here. Voila! Now, why would Mr. Hicks have documents profiling Francisca? Oh, I know! I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Karma, sir! Francisca said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and he followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was, in actuality, Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Francisca has some explaining to do. Come on, sis, time to spill the beans. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? N nonsense What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you in the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so that he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks. Isn't that correct? I should have known you'd figure it out, Miles. But it looks like they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol agent, then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. He went undercover to investigate this crime. And it was I who put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. 
I think we now have pretty definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. I mean, that's awesome and all, but what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage. Oh, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. That happens to me all the time. Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Francisca, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? Nine. Unfortunately, I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see. But this raises another question. A normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the call and entered the cargo hold for that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that. And then... The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases and... They entered the elevator, but while they were riding it up... The plane hit that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open and Agent Hicks's body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, sir? Uh. I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeverse. But the killer has to be none other than Miss Rhoda Teneiro. If it was a crew cool member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is that the key cards that allow the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda Teneiro. I'd say that is a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. What I am certain about is that I must prove Miss Tenero's innocence. Murder accusation aside, she's been quite kind and courteous to me. Besides that, her turning out to be a homicidal maniac is the kind of twist usually reserved for case four or five. Now, let's see. Which of these statements can I possibly... Hmm. Do I have some information here? Any evidence that can go against this statement? No. I don't believe I do. HOLD IT! Why would such important things like the keycard be entrusted to only one person? According to Kemi Neal, Rhoda Teneo is in charge of most of the important stuff. Then what exactly is Miss Meal in charge of? <sighs> Chatting it up was the foolish captain, apparently. <laughs> she was being so foolishly foolish that I didn't want to ask her what her other duties were. Ah! I understand how you feel, but whipping me just now was uncalled for! In the end, the only one who could have let Agent Hicks into the hold was Rhoda Teneiro. Well, that wasn't particularly helpful, and I'm going to feel that in the morning. HOLD IT! That might be true, but then it could be anyone, including Miss Meal or even the captain. Don't be a fool. A plane without a pilot in the cockpit is like a horse without a rider, crop in hand. Much like Scruffy over there. Oh, someone say my nickname! Oh, Jesus! I can't disagree with her on that. Detective Scruffy does always need a guiding hand. Very well, then. What about the other flight attendant, Miss Meal? Ha! <laughs> I thought you might ask about her. Hold it! But it's highly likely that the keycard was stolen from Miss Tenero! Objection! It's highly likely? Is that possibility the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father? Your father was a psychopath! And while I don't have any evidence, I- Be quiet! You are a disgrace! 
There's more evidence pointing to Miss Horda Taneho, you know. It's not just a key card that gives her away. Are you talking about the murder weapon, the Mr. Ifly Piggy Bank? Yeah, she is also the only person with a key to opening that display case. Hmm. I know exactly how the Mr. Ifly Piggy Bank got out without the key, but how to prove that to Francisca? Perhaps if I just show her the statue, it'll jog her memory. OBJECTION! On second thought, let's not do that. I have no great desire to feel that whip on my skin again. Hmm. I don't think any of these pieces of evidence can work. I need more information. HOLD IT! But that is a fake- OBJECTION! Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? <sighs> Speechless, I see. That is not a surprise. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of the weapon? The piggy bank, I think. We should examine the bank itself once more to determine if it is the real murder weapon. If this is the real weapon, it should be damaged or perhaps have a dent on it somewhere. We've looked into that already and there's no sign of anything on it. But we can't discount it as a murder weapon on that one fact alone. The piggy bank is, after all, made of a stronger material than human flesh. If I can't prove it through the piggy bank itself, then I must find another way. What else? Perhaps something hidden at the crime scene? I think we should examine the crime scene in more detail. We might turn up the murder weapon if we search all of the cargo and luggage. Did you think I hadn't thought of that? Even now, we're searching through them, but we haven't found anything that even closely resembles a murder weapon. Alright then! I suppose we should examine something else. And through a process of elimination... Francisca, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes. We don't even have the autopsy results yet. How can I not say that you made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see if the wound on Agent Hicks's head is consistent with the murder weapon? Uh, Scarfy! Oh god, uh, yes sir! Contact the medical examiner's office at once! I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks' autopsy! Yes sir! Uh-oh. We've got a big problem, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. What is it, Detective? They're still doing the autopsy, but they said that they already know this one thing for sure. Report, now! The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating on his shoulder down to his mid-back. From the victim's shoulder to his mid-back? He was beaten over such a wide area. Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Agent Hicks. It wasn't just his head. The killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. It was like something out of American History X. Scruffy, what is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? I, well, that's, um... Was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon detected? Oh, well, they said they were still looking into that, sir. You're completely useless! Ah, but I did everything I was told to! Sir, I told you already, you can't go down there! No! You remove yourself from my way! What is all that racket? My luggage! My cargo! They're mine! And I demand you return them to me! We're still investigating the cargo hold! Please understand and have a little patience! I suppose there is no choice. Finally, I think he gave- Hey! What are you- You have left me no choice, but to use strong force! 
Gah! You, you won't get past me! <laughs> this is... Wait, that's it! So that's what this whole thing has been about! Further, there's a matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed! The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating on his shoulder down to his mid-back. Turbo logic power! It's so simple. It's been staring me in the face this entire time, but I've been too busy being clever to notice it. <laughs> um, actually, I don't think those two pieces go together at all. I'm just a little bit too excited by this breakthrough to be making proper decisions. <laughs> the piggy bank can't be the weapon because there was no weapon that could be held in the hand of the killer, and that is still not the correct connection! Is this going to be one of those logic segments? I'm fairly certain that the cause of his death was not smuggling, unless they were smuggling bruises onto his back. It's obvious that the piggy bank could not have been used to create those extensive bruises. No, no one was smuggling Mr. Ifly piggy banks. The piggy bank was not the weapon. It doesn't match the wounds on Mr. Hicks's back. Oh, thank goodness. Now, let's wow them with my deductive reasoning. Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over, which is why there is extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark, which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then the piggyback is much too small to have caused that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. And something of that size would be far too hard to hide. Unless it was hidden directly in plain sight. Ah, I love it when good logic comes together. If we're looking for a rather large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far, we haven't found anything that resembles a weapon of any sort. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's something we all overlooked from the very beginning. Because normally, it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. Jeez, what was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here or something? Francisca! Vas, what do you want? I found it, Francisca. I found the real murder weapon. Y you did? He, he really jumped! Crazy son of a bitch! We didn't realize it until now, but... The answer has been right in front of us this whole time. Uh, he might be hurt! We should go check on him, sirs! There's that pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. This coming from a prosecutor with a habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Can you hear me? Anyway, if you really are a prosecutor, then you'll back yourself up with evidence. You two aren't listening at all, are you? Come on, then. Show me the real murder weapon you speak of. Well, I don't exactly have it in my organizer. Evidence that big would come underfoot. I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reasoning for a foolish fool, from a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me. What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show you? Perhaps I should have phrased it as, that which caused Agent Hicks's death is incorporeal. Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out what was the real cause of death. The victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free-falling to the ground! He... 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 F fell to his death? Yes, this is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and his back. And the only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. B but the murder happened inside this plane! I know. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, 
The answer has been right in front of us the entire time. You... you can't mean... Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then... then... The, 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 oh, we're in trouble! We may have a second death on our hands, sirs! Oh god, I gotta... Hang in there, buddy! Hey, you! Tell me you aren't dead, pal! Please! Quiet! Why are you screaming? Holy trench coats! He's alive! Woohoo! Oh, thank God in a half! And there you have it, Miles Edgeverse. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over that railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. I suppose it's true that it's not possible, given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? He would have been a Borginian pancake for sure, sir! I suppose that man over there wouldn't still be breathing. But the reality is, the cargo box is there. So there's no point in entertaining your wild hypothetical scenarios. It may be there now. But there is no proof that it was always there! <laughs> As if there could have been a window of time where that giant box was not there. Ah, but there was. Thus? What can I use to show her that it's possible the box was not always where it is now? I think I know how, and if I'm not mistaken, I can thank Miss Gennaro for this piece of evidence. Take that! You refueled in the Republic of Shangfa? Yes, this flight had a short layover in Zhengfa in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. What if the box in question was only transferred onto the plane at that time? To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Ah, it's labeled Zhengfa Express! Correct, meaning it was loaded onto the plane in Zhengfa. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe Sheng Fa leg of the flight. Making a clear drop from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death entirely possible. Ah, but your theory is still very far-fetched. Then allow me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. My first order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Gumshoe, you up for some art appreciation? Hmm, this is a rather large piece of cargo. There's a tag on it, sir. Let's see, uh, Ali Fred statue? Never heard of it. Nor I, but all I care about is if we can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. Then let's get investigating, sir! Masika! Benikatai! Oh, please tell me he is not getting involved. Look here! Do not go about touching my positions without my permission! Yeah, don't rush up on me like that, pal! I kinda thought you died! So this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? I should see what else I can find out from him. Excuse me, Mr. LeBlanc. I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc. Of course it is mine! I shipped this fine piece of art from Europe! This leaf red statue is worth 10 million cents! No! Maybe much, much more. Hmm. Mr. LeBlanc's reason for choosing this plane must have been the large cargo hold. 10 million cents? I suggest you stop trying to calculate how many packets of noodles that makes, Detective. Oh, darn. How did you do that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through me every year. Though I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun, I have the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, so that 10 million cents, is that in euros or in dollars? Does it really make a difference to our case? What? I'm just curious. Mr. LeBlanc, there is a chance that your cargo is related to our murder case. I was wondering if you would allow us to examine it a bit closer. It is a very valuable piece of art. So no, 
There will be no touching! Let's take a step away from the bellowing Borgenian. Got one final connection to make, and I need my peace and quiet to make it. Yes, it's all becoming crystal clear now! If Mr. LeBlanc has something to do with the smuggling ring, then it's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zhengfa. Objection! Objection! Hold it! Hold it! Eureka! Take that! Take that! Next time! Cammy is very talented in languages. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me the contents of the boxes? It says, Pasina. It is cloth in English. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this anyway, sir? It's Mr. Nero's. What? I don't know anything about the phone. <sighs> May I go back to sleep now? Let's start project.